Welcome to Digital Worship. I hope that wherever you are in this moment, maybe it's in the middle of the night, or maybe it's on a Sunday afternoon, or, or whenever it is, that you sense the connectedness of this community. A, a community that believes in you, a community that loves you, a community that you're a part of in this, in this simple way. So pay attention. The Spirit is here. Let us worship.
Jesus Christ is the template for our whole faith, to try to be like him, to try to live in his way. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul talks about that also includes suffering. Listen, yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as a loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as a loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them all as rubbish in order that I might gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and the sharing of His sufferings by becoming like Him in His death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me His own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it by my own devices. But this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Here ends our reading. Uh, last week, we had Casey Gwynn with us. He is the author, uh, co-author of a book called Hope Rising on the Science of Hope. And at the cornerstone of, of his presentation, he spoke to us about the importance of goals in our lives. Uh, just, just one thing that can help us take that next step towards a more hopeful future. And that idea of goals is something that we'll probably talk a lot about together because, because that's just one step in the pathway towards hopefulness, not just for each of us, but for our community. But today, it grabbed my attention because the, test, uh, the text today speaks to us about the importance of a goal. And that goal is Christ-likeness, uh, walking towards Christ, uh, being more like Christ. Uh, it's more about this idea of direction of travel that Paul speaks to us through the letter of Paul to the Philippians. And he himself is doing a little thinking with us about what that looks like. But if you notice in the text today, this, this idea of this goal, which is Christ-likeness, being like Christ in the world, a goal for all of us uh, called people of faith, uh, begins actually before this. Before you can get moving in that direction, something has to happen. And for Paul, part of that piece relates to how he lets go of his past. And he literally tells us what his past looked like. So he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He, he was well-known and well-versed on, on the law. He, he helped make sure that others follow the law to the extent that he was persecuting Christians because he felt like Christians were not following the law. He, he was actually overseeing said persecution, and he, he was very zealous about that work in his life. And, and, and so it is that, that very painful past of his that he has to uh, make peace with 
before he might even begin to think together with us about the goal of being like Christ in the world. And isn't that quite a human thing for all of us? Our past kind of holding us captive, can't shake it. Uh, uh, we, we look at social media or, or see our friends and everyone looks like they have their stuff together. And uh, just today I was at a meeting uh, early this morning and, and we were discussing how painful it is sometimes for parents when they're in the midst of that parenting life, when parenting gets difficult and they, in their minds, they think, oh my gosh, I'm the worst parent. <laughs> Everyone else is a great parent. Everybody else, uh, kids, have it together. But look at me in this circumstance. So we have this tendency in our own lives to hyper-focus on the negative, on the things that are not working. So sometimes our past, our past decisions, our past ways of thinking, our past behaviors, in some ways haunt us. But what that does is those, that, that haunting keeps us from being able to take the next faithful step. That, that, that sense that we have, that guilt and that shame might, might keep us captive and not allow us to grow. Because, hey, here's the reality. The reality of it is, is that none of us have it together. We all can look back at our past and have moments that we regret, have moments that we wish we could take back. Uh, if you're a parent, none of us are perfect parents. <laughs> We're just, we're trying, many of us are just trying the best we can with what we know, or, or even in our jobs. We're not great at our jobs. We, we try our best, but we don't, we're not always 100%. Uh, that's just the reality of being human. None of us are perfect. The question becomes, in light of that imperfection and that humanity, can we, through Christ, in Christ, and by Christ, by the power of the Spirit, can we make peace with our past and with our humanity? Can, 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 can we recognize that, that we can do different today? And, and then that begins to open the pathways. It, it frees us, whereas often our past binds us, making peace with that past, breaking, breaking those cycles, then frees us to begin behaving and being uh, in a different way in the world. And once we kind of make that shift in our minds, possibility actually begins to emerge. And, and the direction of travel changes. And now we are we're aligned towards the person of Jesus Christ. And what does that look like for each of us? What does it look like to be Christ-like? Well, Paul tells us uh, that part of that is, is this, this life of love and sacrificial love, this this idea that, that Christ came and He healed and He reconciled and He forgave. Uh, th th this idea of, of Christ uh, being in the world, divine life, in the flesh. And, and that, that says something about all of us. We too, divine life, living within us. So, so if, we're, if we're walking towards Christ, if that's our direction of travel, if that's our goal, then we begin to look at ourselves in the mirror differently, seeing Christ in us, seeing that divine spark in each of us, but we also then begin to see that divine spark and that divine life in those that we encounter each and every day. Now, that doesn't mean that the difficulties of life are no longer there. Oh, oh there's still going to be the difficulties of life. There's still going to be the, the things that happen in our lives that we maybe didn't expect. There, there's still going to be the surprises of being human. There's still going to be the heartbreaks, the regrets, the things that we maybe would do different. But if we stick with the goal of keeping this divine life, this divine love, this, this reality before us, and we going towards that, that begins to lay the, the pathway for each of us to, to begin to, to let go and, and, and begin to, to, to grow our lives in that love and in that compassion and in that peace and in that justice. Uh, it, it allows us to, to have more empathy with our neighbor as we encounter them our long life's way. If, if, we, can, if we can do that, if we can ha keep that as, our, as, a, as a primary goal, then, then that also connects us to community 
It's one of the things that I love about baptisms in the church, right? When you're holding this little baby uh, to get, and you, you say words of beauty and blessing and, and we, we welcome this child into the community of faith and we walk this child in the community and all of us nod our heads and smile and, and wave at this child. We, we are claiming that, that we're not alone. So in Christ's likeness, we're reminding one another that we're not alone that we're part of a larger community, a community of humans like you and I, that though imperfect, are together letting go of the past and walking freely, using our human agency, walking freely towards a future that's more loving, compassionate, just, kind, connected, engaged, a, a more realistic future for each of us, for our neighbors, our loved ones, our co-workers, and even our enemies. So, so today, people of God, have you been spending too much time obsessing or anxious over your past? Have you, have you spent too much time rolling that those realities in your head? Are you ready to break that cycle and like Paul claims something here? And then, are you ready to make a goal today? It's the, the goal today to, to, to shift your, your view, to, to walk towards Christ's likeness in community. You're not alone. <laughs> and allowing that to then pave the way towards a more loving, kind, and just future for you and for all around you. It really is, it's, it's, it's a decision we make each and every day of our lives. And I have a hunch, and that is this, that when we do that together and we remind each other of that, our hope will come up, our view will be broader, our horizon will begin to emerge. We we'll be more fully human that way if we just lift up our heads and pay attention, let go, and walk towards Jesus Christ. Hmm, what a wonderful thing that will be for you, for us, and for the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.
And so now our worship together comes to a close. It might be that you're discovering that First Plymouth is your spiritual community, your church, even if you're at a distance and worshiping with us digitally. If so, know this. You could join this movement we call First Plymouth. You could become a member. Simply click over to the website and you could join on the website. Then you'd receive a letter from me hoping that we could have a phone call so I could hear about your spiritual journey and you can become part of what we're trying to achieve here at First Plymouth. All that love and justice and hope and peace, all of that. <laughs> but now, at the end, I speak a benediction and I say to you simply, hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Find your joy in serving others. Go in peace. Every day at First Plymouth, we live our mission of increasing the love of God and neighbor. That's our passion and our guiding light. Last year, in the wake of the pandemic, First Plymouth stepped up our support in the community with many Just Neighbors events and the extremely successful Medical Debt Initiative. This year, all year, we turn our attention to hope, giving hope in a time when many struggle with despair. The Year of Hope is our commitment to our community to put God's love in action. Our operating budget comes from you and other First Plymouth members. It supports our many outreach services and special programs, as well as worship services, programs for children, youth, and families, our music ministry, and building operations. All of it grounded in love, hope, and of course, generosity. Our annual pledge drive is in progress. If you can make a pledge of financial support for the coming year of any amount, know that it will be used prayerfully and responsibly to extend the love of First Plymouth and provide more hope in the world. For information on how to make a pledge, visit firstplymouth.org. First Plymouth runs on gratitude, and we are grateful for yours.